A 45 foot thick confined aquifer has a piezometric surface 95 feet above the bottom confining layer. Groundwater is being extracted from a 6 inch diameter fully penetrating wall. The pumping rate is 38 gallons per minute. The aquifer is relatively sandy with a hydraulic conductivity of 165 gallons per day per square foot. Steady state drawdown of 6 feet of observed in a monitoring well 12 feet from the pumping well. The drawdown in the pumping well is most nearly A7, B10, C13, or D16. Pause the video and we'll take 5 minutes to solve the problem. Have you finished solving the problem? Let's see if you got the correct answer. Today we will talk about confined aquifers. As we discussed in episode 18, an aquifer is a body of saturated rock through which water can easily move. Aquifers must be both permeable and porous and include such rock types as sandstone, conglomerate, fractured limestone, and unconsolidated sand and gravel. Confined aquifers are those in which an impermeable dirt or rock layer exists that prevents water from seeping into the aquifer from the ground surface located directly above. Instead, water seeps into confined aquifers from farther away where the impermeable layer doesn't exist. They are usually deeper under the ground than unconfined aquifers and the relatively impermeable rock or clay layer limits groundwater movement into or out of the confined aquifer. Lastly, groundwater in a confined aquifer is under pressure and will rise up inside a borehole drilled into the aquifer. The level to which the water rises is called the potentiometric surface. An artesian flow is where water flows out of the borehole under natural pressure. Confined aquifers may be replenished or recharged by rain or stream water infiltrating the rock at some considerable distance away from the confined aquifer. We are looking for the drawdown in the pumping well or the distance to the water in the pumping well from ground level. The equation we will be using is the following. H2 is the distance from the bottom of the aquifer to the second sampling point and H1 is the distance from the bottom of the aquifer to the first sampling point. In this problem, our first sampling point is the pumping well itself and this will be less exact versus having two separate sampling points in addition to the pumping well. However, using the pumping well as our first sampling point will still give us a good estimate. So let's get rolling. Looking at our equation, let's get our units consistent. So our flow rate is 38 gallons per minute. And once we convert this to gallons per day, this equals 54,720 gallons per day. Transmissivity, T, is equal to the hydraulic conductivity times the thickness of the aquifer. Using the data we have, we can calculate this and we get 7,425 gallons per day per foot. We also went over this concept in episode 18. Now that all of our units are consistent, we can plug our data into this equation. R2 is the distance from the pumping well to our second sampling point, and R1 is the distance from the pumping well to our first sampling point. For us, the pumping well is the first sampling point, so we will use the radius of the pumping well. So we plug our data into the equation, and we get the following. We can solve for H1, and we get 85.27 feet, which is the distance from the water level in the pumping well to the bottom of the aquifer. We can now solve for the drawdown, which is the difference between the distance from the ground level to the aquifer's bottom and the distance from the water level in the pumping well to the bottom of the aquifer. We do this and we get a drawdown of 9.73 feet, which is closest to B. Join us for episode 32 of 52 PE exam problems in 52 weeks.